Season 1 of the Wolves takeover is in the books, with the lows of player revolts, bad injuries and last minute heartbreaks, to the highs of new signings making huge impacts, injury time winners and our highest ever Premier League finish. And with the transfer market open and European football to look forward to, it's time to kick off a huge Season 2. Now we ended Season 1 with an unlikely 5th place finish in the Premier League, and with the morale sky high in the Wolves camp. But I guess the biggest question mark getting into this season is to whether or not we can sustain that level of performance, especially with some of the biggest teams in Europe sniffing around for the signature of some of the best players at the club. Starting out with Pedro Neto, at the beginning of season one he made a bold claim to me demanding to leave the club if we don't achieve European football in season two. And after managing to achieve our unlikely goal, I've decided right at the beginning of this new season to meet back up with his and his agent one year on from that fateful day to make sure that we are all on the same page heading into this next new season. Neto feels like he's a crucial player here at Wolverhampton Wanderers and he wants his new contract to be reflective of that status. And with me happy to secure the services of one of the best players at the entire club. I'm more than happy to give him a nice little salary bump and a one-year contract extension, which means that the Portuguese ace will continue his journey here at Wolverhampton Wanderers and continue on the Wolves revolution here in this career mode. And so with one big name down, it's time to move on to another. The now 23-year-old Algerian Real Nate Nori had an absolutely stellar campaign last season. And with him up to an 80 rated and only having two years left on his contract, I'm sure eventually he sees his long-term future away from the club playing at the highest level of Champions League football. But for now, I want to make sure that I can tie his short-term future down at the club so that if any big teams do eventually come in for his services, we can get absolutely top dollar for the young man. Just like his Portuguese teammate Pedro Neto, he is happy to accept a contract extension as well, this time of an extra two years. The only thing is, his agent is a little bit smarter than that of Pedro Neto, and she wants to make sure that we include a release clause in his contract so that some of the biggest teams in Europe do decide to come in for a signature. We can do absolutely nothing but accept it. It seems Seems like she drives a very hard bargain and I'm going to have to agree to this £58.3 million clause. But with me wanting to make sure that he does remain a Wolverhampton Wanderers player, at least for the next couple of years, it's something that I'm just going to have to accept. Just as he did, he's happy to accept the contract and to kick off Season 2, we've got two huge new contract extensions that hopefully will give us the momentum heading into the new season. The same, however, cannot be said for the 25-year-old Brazilian Matias Kuna. After suffering a big injury midway through Season 1, taking him out of the game for about two months. We decided to shift away from this 4-2-3-1 tactical system across to a 4-2-4 setup. It allowed me to get the best out of the likes of Delinga and Jorgen Strand Larsen, but it left this man absolutely furious, demanding to get more game time or he was going to hand in a transfer request. And with the team clearly doing so well last season, and with me not wanting to bow to player pressure, unfortunately for the 25-year-old Brazilian, there was no place for him back in the starting 11, meaning that an immediate transfer request came in for him and it also means that he will be the first big name to depart Wolverhampton Wanderers at the very beginning of Season 2. The Brazilian has got his wish, and he will be staying in the Premier League, as Chelsea have managed to snap up his services for £32.2 million. Now, obviously, his departure to the London Giants does, of course, mean that we will now be sticking with this 4-2-4 system heading into the new season. But with me also transfer listing the now-returning loanee, Saza Kalasic, with me thinking that another returning loanee in Gonzalo Guides might be more suited to changing his development to shift away from being a striker and more to being a winger. And with the third returning loanee in Fabio Silva flattering to deceive ever since joining Wolves and only having 11 months left on his contract, I really do believe that this is going to be a key area of the team that I need to make my number one priority. And that's why once again it's time for me to turn to one of my most trusted scouts. Dillinger and Strand Larsen have finally begun to find their form, not wanting to upset the apple cart and hamper their growth. We want a striker who's not going to shake too many branches but one who can still turn to. And Ketia has been fulfilling that role for most of his career and relatively reliable. Another option could be Nemecha from Wolfsburg, quick and rangy just like our current strikers. Nemecha may be looking for his move to the Premier League, offering us a slight different option on the bench and one that can run in behind the lines. Nemecha would be a shrewd choice for our three-man rotation. And get his move to the Premier League, he most certainly did because it looks like Crystal Palace have snapped off his services before we've had the opportunity to. Lucas Nemecha would be a very good option, but unfortunately he's not one we're going to be able to pursue this season. The other option though I think would be a perfect addition to this Wolverhampton Wanderers club and so that is why after becoming more of a bit part player at Arsenal but looking to retain his status as a Premier League player I have decided to snap up a man who has European experience both in the Europa League and in the Champions League with Arsenal that is right it is time to say hello to our first signing of the summer for a bargain 13.8 million pound it's Eddie Nketiah he's 78 rated entering his prime years I think he has all the attributes necessary to take the fight to the likes of Delinga and Strand Larson for a starting spot and off 
offer an extra layer of quality and strength in depth to my squad. However, turning my attention back to some of the existing players that we already have in the squad, just when I thought morale was at an all-time high, I was sadly mistaken. Because after the arrival of Mika Marmol at the beginning of Season 1, and the discussion that potentially I might be looking for a replacement for his defensive partner in Santiago Bueno, it seems like news has got back to the 25-year-old and he is not a happy man. Hi there, Mr. Adrian. As the sporting director's assistant, I'd like to inform you news from Santiago Bueno's agent. He said he's unhappy at the club. In addition to this, he would look to stay if he's given a 20% wage increase. Now, I've got to be honest, with me handing out new contracts for fun at the beginning of this season, I was slightly concerned that news of those new contracts might filter through the rest of the squad. And it seems like those concerns have come to life because, of course, now Santiago Bueno is the next man to ask me for a raise in salary. But to be honest with you, with him having such a good campaign last season, and of course, with me wanting to keep the sky-high morale at the same level at the club, for this one time only, I'm actually okay with giving in to his demands. And so that is why Santiago Bueno becomes the third man to sign a new contract here at Wolverhampton Wanderers at the very beginning of Season 2. He too gets a contract extension for another year and of course a nice little salary bump. But more importantly, it keeps the rest of the squad very happy indeed. However, with the likes of Ryan Ait Nori, Mika Marmo and Santiago Bueno now seemingly fairly happy with their positions at the club, it did start to get me thinking about other areas and other personnel in my defence that I'm going to need to either move on from the club and try and improve on. And so that is why the floodgates have opened and the mass coal and exodus here at Wolverhampton Wanderers has finally started to begin. Firstly, beginning with the now veteran Irishman Matt Doherty, who departs to Nottingham Forest for 2.75 million. The towering six foot seven striker Sasa Kalasic becomes departure number two out of the door as he leaves to Besiktas for 18.4 million pounds. Now, I wasn't initially thinking about selling the young Portuguese former wonder kid Fabio Silva, but when Bournemouth came in for an offer for him that I just couldn't refuse, he will be the third man to leave for 6.7 million pounds. Youngster Enzo Gonzalez also leaves to Coventry for 3.2, as well as Mosquera to lease for 2.35, along with finally being able to get that most coveted loan move for my potential and future Cristiano Ronaldo wonder kid in Camilo Rocha, who goes on loan to Shelbourne for 12 months. As you can see, there's a whole host of other fringe players as well who also depart the club ahead of the new season, which all in, despite the new arrival of Enketia, have helped boost my budget up to £179 million. And with that money, I think it's time to finally make some more improvements to this team. And first off, we're going to start at right back with Matt Doherty's departure, leaving Nelson Semedo, now the only senior right back at the club. And with him now being 30 years of age and his contract expiring in 10 months and seemingly quite a lot of you wanting me to finally find an upgrade for this man, it seems like it's only right that I go back to my shortlist to try and see if I can make a right back the next signing for this club. But as I sit in my office minding my own business going through said list, it seems like word has got out once again that I do have such a huge budget at my disposal, which means it's no surprise to see yet another player agent knocking at my door. Hello, Mr. Adrian. I've seen that at right back you only have the aging Nelson Semedo, which needs improvement. I would like to recommend Aaron Hickey from Brentford. With him being 21, probably 22 in the save, and being 76 rated, also probably grew in the save. He can grow and provide much needed squad depth as you'll be playing in Europe next season. Now you know what, I'm not normally one to listen to agents as they normally have an ulterior motive, but actually, could this well be the time that this man is right on the money? With the young man being just 22 years of age, fitting into the young ethos of players that I want to bring to the football club, and with him having a really good couple of seasons in the Premier League with Brentford, I think it's only right that he continue his career moving into European football and becoming the second man to join the Wolves revolution here on this career mode. That is right. As we say hello to Aaron Hickey for £17.5 million. He's eight years the junior of Nelson Semedo, but he's got the versatility to play both on the right and the left-hand side of defence. And with his stats showing that he has so much room for growth, I am really, really excited to see what the future holds for the young Scotsman. And I think the depth of this squad just got even better. Now, with the arrival of Eddie Nketiah at the very beginning of the transfer window, there's been a lot of talk from some of the Wolves fans about what other areas of the attacking part of the pitch that we're going to look to try and improve ahead of the new season. Now, as you all know from last season, I had two young potential wonder kids in Maurice Hajard and the 19-year-old Barcelona forward Victor Roque, both on loan. And whilst they both did okay last season with me having £159 million to spend and with me wanting to focus on making permanent improvements
signs that are going to take this team to the next level. I've got to be honest, at this stage in the club's development, I'm not quite sure I want to bring such players back in on loan this season. And if I am going to bring someone in, especially to play either on the right or the left-hand side of midfield, I want that person to be a real statement signing who's going to shake things up here at Wolverhampton Wanderers. However, it seems like once again there is another leak in the Wolves camp and it seems like word has got out that I am looking for that statement signing because just ahead of my press conference of the first game of the Premier League, a news reporter drops an absolute bombshell on me. Hi Adrian, I'm a news reporter and I feel the need to forewarn you that Huang He Chan has been in touch with me and is enthusiastic about doing an interview with me as he's heard about all the rumour talk about his poor form last season, particularly from the first half. From what I can tell, he's furious with how you dropped him for Roque and believes that the 18 goals and assists that he racked up makes him the best attacker in your side this season. It's just coming from my sources that he may have missed a training session last week claiming he was ill. However, it's rumoured that he was spotted clubbing in Dublin. My sources also say that there's a video of him saying he'd rather play for Scunthorpe than take any more disrespect from you at Wolves. It's even rumoured that he led the club in chanting about your dead hairline. As I am a money-hungry reporter, I'm still going to do this interview, but I felt it was wrong to leave you out of the loop. All the best. Well, wow, I am absolutely shell-shocked. Never in my life have I heard such disdain from a player, even to go after and attack the manager, especially when he's as good-looking as I am. It begs the question, though, how on earth am I going to solve this situation? To be fair to Huang, he's not wrong. I mean, I did mention several times last season that I wasn't happy with his performances. It was the entire reason why I brought Victor Roque in in the first place. But with him performing so well in the final six months of the season, I thought it was a rift that we'd put behind us. Clearly, I was wrong, and now I've got a big question that I need your help with. With squad morale very happy, and obviously with me wanting to keep it that way, how on earth am I going to deal with this complete subordination from this man, Huang? Am I just going to drop him from the next couple of games? Am I going to completely and utterly ruin his Wolves career and stick him on the transfer list? Or do I recognise that he is still one of the best attackers at the club, brush it under the carpet, and hope that he can pick up the form from where he left off last season? Let me know down in the comments what you think. In the meantime, we've got an even bigger problem because we are about to kick off Season 2 with an almighty task of travelling to the Etihad where we're going to be facing off against the current, in real life, reigning Premier League champions in Manchester City. A colossal game. There's going to be a colossal ask for us to get any points from. In terms of our starting 11, you will see that both of our new signings are going to be starting on the bench, Aaron Hickey in particular, because of a little bit of fatigue that has crept into his game. As for the rest of the team, there's one big change due to that outburst from Huang. He does drop to the bench and he's going to be replaced by Guides, back from his loan, hoping to make a name for himself on the left-hand side of midfield. We're kicking off, though, with Manchester City in the ascendancy and it's Robertson into Jan Kuto, into Kevin De Bruyne, inside my half here, under pressure immediately inside the opening 10 minutes. Manchester City looking to try and make a statement at the very beginning of this season with Phil Foden down the left-hand side, trying to get past Nate Norrie, fresh off his new contract, brimming full of confidence, wonderful challenge, takes it away. Will be that man Phil Foden to pick it up once again, and it's Robertson who turns really nicely away from the challenge of Nate Norrie, but once again, the Algerian with a thumping challenge, and now we'll try and drive down the left-hand side and plays it into Dalinga. Dalinga has an option in the box. Can he try and find that option? Instead, takes it on himself. Took the shot on outside the box. In the end, it was easy for Edison. Lamina picks it up. Into that man, Pedro Neto. Dalinga turns, twists away from a couple of challenges. Really good play from the striker. Back into Neto. Neto feeds it into the channel to Larson. No one in the box, though. Larson cuts it back, looking for Semedo. Doesn't manage to find him. Attack breaks down. It's Rene Nori once again. Into Lamina, who's come deep. And it's Guides' first real touch in the game. But he gives it to Dalinga in a really difficult position. And that's, uh, that's poor from the Portuguese man. Trying to assert himself and make a name for himself and get a spot in the starting 11. He's not going to be doing his uh, his job any favours and his cause any good so far as Phil Foden once again tries to go past Nate Norrie but once again the Algerian that's three challenges he's got in the way and this looks like it's going to be a real positive season for him once again. Mendy for City under pressure from Neto. Good pressure there but City just about still keep the ball alive. We can't get it back off of him as Bernardo Silva bursts forward here. Lovely little pass into Robertson in the centre of the park. Unmarked. Where on earth am I midfield? Robinson goes into Foden. Foden from the outside of the box forces Jose Sarr into an acrobatic save. The left back Ain't Nori who has it once again. This time gives it to Gomez who goes back into the centre of the park. Into Lamina. Lamina plays it forward into Larson who's come deep to pick it up and get himself involved. Dalinga back into Larson. Larson's going to try and see if he can play it down this right hand side. Into Pedro Neto who just about gets there ahead of Mendy. Really good play from the Portuguese man. There's Neto back on his left again. Lines it up with the strike in the end. It was a little bit selfish play from him. He could have laid it off. He didn't as the referee blows for half time. But it hasn't been an exhilarating 
interesting affair, it must be said. Neither team really able to carve out any clear-cut opportunities. Both teams have had half chances, neither of which they could say, because it stays nil-nil at the beginning of this second half as Guides tries to go past Shankuto. Doesn't really have the acceleration to do so. Phil Foden now into Robertson once again, who goes over the top looking for Jack Grealish, but Semedo read that one really well, clearly with the new addition of Aaron Hickey. The Portuguese man has got to raise his game as he searches for a new contract here at Wolves, and Pedro Neto now bursts into the box. This is surely going to be the best chance of the game. Neto tried to cut it back. Really good defending him him from the left back. It's Kevin De Bruyne. Out to Kuto on the right-hand side. He's been chased down by Ignore. He cuts inside to try and see if he can find some sort of different option. And he does find that option in Bernardo Silva. Turns it back around the corner into Kevin De Bruyne. Right on the edge of the box. Gives it to Phil Foden. Lovely little passing here from Manchester City. Robertson strikes straight at Jose Sarr. Makes a bit of a meal of it. But just about manages to get on the end of it. It's Neto once again. Into Strand Larson. Larson turning, weaving, trying to get away from a couple of charges. This time fires it across to Ignore. He was unmarked on the left-hand side. He's got Gonzalo Guides now. If he can find him, which he he does and Guides can't go past Ake. It's Gomez now in the centre of the park, drives forward looking for a run and finds a run of Delinga. And he's got an option if he can find it in Pedro Neto, who's unmarked in the box. Pedro Neto, lovely finish from the Portuguese. And with 79 minutes on the clock, Wolverhampton Wanderers have taken an unlikely lead here at the Etihad. Pedro Neto found himself in acres of space. The Manchester City defence was completely dragged out of position and the Portuguese took advantage. It's a lovely finish. Finish. Just curved it around the goalkeeper. Look at the celebrations. 1-0. And as Pedro Neto celebrates in front of the travelling fans, I'm going to try and look to keep up momentum. And that is why Eddie Nketiah is going to get his debut here in a Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt. And I'm also going to hopefully see if I can let bygones be bygones here with 10 minutes to go. Huang comes onto the pitch. Let's see how much that interview may have affected his performance. Bueno though, my centre back all running into all sorts of problems. What is he doing? Oh, Santiago Bueno. He's an absolute mare, has the Uruguayan. Fresh off of getting a new contract. He's full of confidence and perhaps he's brimming with too much confidence. He tried to play out from the back. He, like, he tried to dribble around the Manchester City press and he was caught completely unawares. Where is he going there? The press beat him and he left a complete hole for Erling Haaland to apply the finish. And of course, he is not going to miss from there. Manchester City score and yet again, just like we did last season, we've conceded another late equaliser against Manchester City and we've completely thrown away the three points. Well, the Wolves players go off the pitch in disbelief. We thought we'd done enough to get the winner but just a silly mistake at the back once again has cost us. As a full-time era finishes, City won, Wolves won. Well, I spoke about last-minute goals that we conceded last season, and it seems like we've continued that trend at the beginning of Season 2. I put my faith in Santiago Bueno, I gave him a new contract, and he's completely ripped it up and thrown it back in my face. It's kind of left me in a bit of a quandary, though, because I was initially thinking that both he and Marmol were going to be the long-term defensive future for me, with having Totti Gomez, the 25-year-old Portuguese, as an able deputy. And whilst I wasn't able to offload Craig Dawson with him retiring at the end of the season I was kind of hoping that I could potentially now bring in a younger centre back who could grow and develop at the club but with Santiago Bueno making absolute howlers like that I'm really not going to be able to take this team to the next level if we're going to be throwing away points so easily so once again I return to my scouts I am in desperate need of your help should I give Bueno another chance stick with him and see how he progresses across the course of season two and then maybe bring in a young and up and coming centre back as a fourth choice defender at the heart of my defense or should I look to my shortlist and try and see if I can bring in a marquee signing to play in the center of my defense that can really lift this team to the very next level once again let me know down below what you think and to be honest it kind of feels like I'm in a similar situation in the wide areas of the pitch as well this man Gonzalo Guides in his first start supposedly had that something special but really did not show it just a 5.7 rating and he was largely a peripheral figure for most of the game and similar to Craig Dawson with no takers for Pablo Zarabi this season and with him looking to retire at the end of it as well. Plus with the ongoing issues that I'm having with Huang, what am I going to do to try and improve this team? So once again, it is scouts at the ready. It's player agents at the ready. If you've got anyone that you're representing that you feel could be a good addition to Wolves, you know with the fact that I brought in Aaron Hickey that I will listen to you. Let me know down below in the comments what you think and let me know if there are any specific players either on this shortlist or not on this shortlist that you want to see in a Wolverhampton 
Captain Wondra shirt heading into the beginning of season two. For the moment though, I feel like it's time for us to put that stuff behind us as we embark on our second game of the episode. And it's our first game of the season at the Molyneux in front of our home fans. We will be eager to put on a better performance and a better showing than we did very late on against Manchester City as we welcome Norwich in a game that I think is very winnable. And as you will see, fresh off that draw against Manchester City, there are a couple of big changes to my starting 11. Bueno is dropped to the bench. Totti Gomez will come in to replace him in the heart of my defence. Aaron Hickey will get his debut here in the Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt. He starts on the right-hand side, as does Bargy on the left of midfield. He comes in for Guides, who drops to the bench. So here we go then already, just 10 minutes into this game, every single Norwich player is inside their own half here. I feel like I'm going to have to beat the low block if I want to get a result here today. And with my attack a little bit all over the place at the moment, I feel like this is going to be one that I'm really going to have to dig in to try and get a result from. But already it looks like Norwich are going to try and hit us on the counter-attack with a lovely ball into Due, into the box he goes. And he's unmarked here. Where on earth is my defence as McLean smashes it against Marmol. Norwich have got a corner. And it's one that they're not offering a short option for, so they throw into the box. It's a good ball in. Toddy Gomez, though, with a big header, and it's Hernandez on the volley. Jose Sarr equal to it, though. So it's Aaron Hickey now with his first touch in a Wolves shirt, goes central and tries to play a ball through, but it's really well intercepted by McLean. And now Hernandez has it for Norwich. This has really not been a good start here for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And now that's a lovely ball, but Aaron Hickey with a really good interception. That is exactly what I want to see from the right back. Norwich have it once again, though, with Hernandez, and Gomez comes across. Yao Gomez, that is, to try and challenge him. Doesn't put in a decent enough challenge. And Sorensen now has it. And he plays it into McLean. Marmol, the centre-back, coming out to press high. Does a really good job of winning that one back, but then goes and loses it again. This is really poor. All over the place we are so far, and we've given it away again. What on earth is going on here in the opening 38 minutes? Absolutely all over the place. Not the start of the season that I was hoping for. Norwich have it once again. In. Every single man inside my half here as they press to look to try and see if they can take the lead right on the stroke of half time. Playing some really good football into McLean, into uh, Kang Song Jin, I think that is. Back out to Duffy. They're just probing away, trying to see if they can find that gap, that little opening to unlock my defence. And they almost have done it here as they're right on the edge of the box. They play it out to Dewey on the right hand side. He tries to play and he does into Barnes, who takes it on. Jose Saar beats it away. He's very lucky that Gomez is there to clear it as the referee blows for half time. Well, goodness gracious me, we breathe a sigh of relief on the stroke of half time. We were all over the place, sixes and sevens at the back. We were completely allowing Norwich to just walk their way through my defence and my midfield, and we get away with only being, well, with it only being nil-nil right on the stroke of half time as Bargy is taking matters into his own hands here. He's gone past about four players, and in the end, struck from the outside of the penalty area, and was just inches wide with that one. Jose Saar into a Nori once again. It seems Seems like we've started off this second half a little bit better than we ended the first. We're getting a little bit more of a grip on the game without really threatening too much though. And just as I say that, we go and give the ball away in a really dangerous position. Gomez though just about makes amends. Can we try and see if we can launch a counter attack with Petro Neto who comes central. He's looking for a run, finds the run of Strand Larsen and Strand Larsen is surely going to try and go out wide to Bargy. He does go out wide. What was that from Bargy? Absolutely terrible. And again, just showing the young man a little bit of naivety, a little bit of inexperience. But Delinga's won the ball back thanks to the pressure of Larson. And Larson takes it on off the bar. It comes back out to Delinga, who at the second attempt with his head gets the nod in front. And Wolverhampton Wanderers take the lead. Well, the fans got absolutely nuts. But I've got to be honest, it doesn't really feel like a particularly deserved lead. Lovely play, though, by the two strikers. It just goes to show this new system is going to work, hopefully, for us in the long term the two players pressuring high we want it back in a dangerous position and at the second attempt we eventually manage to get the goal Delinga takes the plaudits nice little header into the bottom left hand corner it is 1-0 Wolves and once again with 20 minutes remaining I'm turning again to Eddie Nketia to try and see if he can be the man to get the second goal for us and put this game to bed but it's Norwich who have a free kick in a really good position and at the moment they look like they're going to be the team they're going to be more likely to get the equaliser eight Norwich tries to head it away into Gibson oh my goodness he's just put it inches wide. The Tossi Gomez to bring it out of defence. What options has he got in front of him? Absolutely none. Has to go out wide to Pedro Neto, who plays it back to the right back Aaron Hickey. Gomez though, Yao Gomez this time is going to throw it right across to Guides on as a sub. Doesn't do a good enough job of winning it back, but Delinga does, and Delinga now takes it on, and he's taking matters into his own hands. Goes past a couple of runners, tries to go into the box, gets a little bit caught out though, and once again, Wolves bring it away, 
but this time it's Yao Gomez who again puts in a really good challenge. Pedro Neto down this right hand side, trying to see if he can find an option in the box. Smashes it against the left back and gets a corner. And Lamina is going to be the man to take said corner. Flings it into the box. Looks for Gonzalo Guinez who just knotted over the bar. It's Duffy for Norwich. Into McLean once again. Out to Hernandez on the left hand side. Deep into stoppage time. Norwich in the ascendancy. Frantically, desperately looking for that equaliser. We have to hold on. We cannot suffer the same fate that we did against Manchester City. How many more minutes is the referee going to wait for? It turns out none because he blows his whistle. And finally, Wolverhampton Wanderers get their first three points of the season. Well, it wasn't an electric performance, it must be said. But that man, Delinga, puts his fist in the air because he's happy to get his first goal of the season as he gives us a much needed 1-0 victory at full time. So it's a win and an unbeaten start in our opening two games of the Premier League campaign. It puts us up to sixth place which is a fairly decent spot to start with but I've got to be honest things just don't seem to feel right here at Wolverhampton Wanderers. With the departure of Matthias Kuna to Chelsea, with Huang Hee Chan complaining about me to the media, with Gonzalo Guides failing to shine on the left hand side of midfield, with Eddie Nketiah yet to get a goal in his cameo appearances off the bench and with some question marks about our solidity and our confidence at the back I really feel like I'm going to need your help to identify the problems here at the club now I know so far I've only brought in two incoming transfers but we do still have a week left of the transfer window and 160 million pounds still left in the transfer budget now I don't want to upset this squad too much by making wholesale changes but I really do feel like we need one or two marquee signings to take the team to the next level it feels like a new addition at the heart of my defense is something I'm going to have to seriously consider and it really does feel like I'm going to need a new attacker especially in the wide areas to try and inject some sort of creativity into what has been a fairly lackluster attack so far this season plus we still got a huge decision to make about how we're going to handle the insubordination from this man Huang so once again I say to you scouts agents local news reporters at the ready let me know what brand new players you want to see in a Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt and with 160 million pound left to spend let's get down to some serious transfer business but that is going to be it for the end of today's episode thank you everyone for watching i really do appreciate your comments your feedback it goes such a long way to improving the quality of these videos please do keep them coming and hopefully i'll see you again next time